Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bevan Boychuk and I love movies. And despite how much I love movies, there are just so many in the world that I haven't seen. So many big blockbuster movies that everybody rants and raves about, but I've never seen for whatever reason. And that's the point of this show. Movies I should have seen by now, where every week I watch a movie I should have seen by now. Now before I get into the review, I have to apologize. I have a very bad cold right now. I don't know if it sounds like it right now, but I can definitely feel it. So if I'm sluggish and not as energetic as I would like to be, I am sorry. This week, I watched Independence Day for the first time ever, starring Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum. And the big question is, was this movie good? I definitely liked parts of it. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's a bad movie by any means, but I, I found myself bored throughout a little bit, not caring exactly what happened to the majority of the characters. It just seemed to jump around between them all so much that it was really difficult for me to emotionally attach myself to any of them specifically. I mean, I cared about Will Smith because I care about Will Smith, but not necessarily his character in the movie, so I didn't really, I didn't really feel the stakes of this movie. That is until the end. Uh, at the very end of the movie, when we're all standing there, I did feel the heartstrings tugging, I felt a little emotional, I felt a little tear come up, but it, it, it took a lot of work for me to get to that spot. I was also pleasantly surprised to see Cousin Nicky in this movie, along with uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Nah, I mean? Nah, I mean? West Philadelphia, born and raised in the playground where I spent most of my days. For those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with this movie as I now am, because I've seen it and I'm an expert on Independence Day. This movie is basically about aliens coming to Earth, being there, attacking the Earth, destroying all the major cities, and then the US government tag teaming with all the other governments around the world to basically destroy the mothership and defeat the aliens, send them back to wherever they came from. Jeff Goldblum's a scientist. His ex-wife works for the President of the United States, who also is a major character in this movie. Vivica A. Fox is Will Smith's uh, girlfriend and cousin Nikki's mom, and also a stripper, which is cool, although we didn't really see any of her stripping, but whatever. And speaking of all these different characters, and also looking at the t-shirt that I'm wearing right now of Star Wars, this movie is essentially, in my opinion, a toned down version. And I don't mean toned down in terms of like shittier, but like, whereas Star Wars is galactic, uh, Independence Day, of course, takes place almost solely in the United States of America in this movie. Now, listen to me before you call me a crazy man. So we have all these different characters who seemingly have no connection to each other at all. We got the soldier with the stripper. We got the uh, president with the first lady who's on the other side of the country. We got this weird hick dude who lives in a trailer and claims he was abducted by aliens 10 years ago. Like why would all these people be in this movie unless they all had reasons to be in this movie? Like it didn't make any sense to me at first. But then they all somehow become interconnected where Vivica A. Fox is left alone by Will Smith, but then she finds that the first lady in destruction, like, finds her bleeding to death basically on the ground in Los Angeles, I think it was, that they lived in. And they all come together at the end to save the day because there's the president, Jeff Goldblum, uh, Jeff Goldblum's wife, the first lady, Will Smith, Vivica A. Fox, cousin Nikki, uh, their little dog that helped out. Uh, the redneck guy and his family somehow all came together too at this army base. And essentially, all these random characters from all different corners of the country, or in the Star Wars case, the universe, um, all come together for the sole purpose of destroying this one big, um, invading mothership, spaceship, the Death Star, essentially. Whereas Will Smith is like your Han Solo character, uh, he is, he's the pilot, He's the soldier, he knows what to do, he's been through some shit. Um, Jeff Goldblum, I guess, would be your... He would be your uh, Luke Skywalker. And then his wife would be the Princess Leia. Uh, the president would be uh, Ben Kenobi. Uh, Vivica A. Fox would be... Vivica A. Fox 
and Cousin Nikki would be C-3PO and R2-D2, and the dog would be Chewbacca. So that's kind of how I see this movie as like uh, a smaller scale Star Wars with essentially the same story, but not as good with characters I didn't care enough about until the, the last 20 minutes of the movie. And speaking of which, this movie is long. It is two and a half hours, which, yeah, I know there's other long movies out there that are way longer than this movie, but I don't know, this movie had so much time to make me care, but just didn't make me care about anything that was happening in the movie. So like, that's, it's a down, that's a downside. I mean, a lot of the stuff could have been cut and made this a two hour movie and it would have been just as good or maybe even better because it didn't have all the filler in there. But I thought I had to watch this movie now because the trailer for Independence Day 2 just came out. No respect. Absolutely none. Overall, this movie is fine. I'm sure back in 1996, it was way better. This is probably one of those times where it doesn't hold up over 20 years just because of the technology they used in the movie but you, you, you can't fault that I know I know this is a it's a it's a big budget blockbuster that I'm sure was wildly successful when it came out in 1996 so like I had to see it because the sequel is coming out this year and I'm gonna go see that because it looks pretty good so I had to watch this one to have the context of what I'll be in for for the sequel the movie is fine uh, I don't think I'll watch it too too often I bought it on Blu-ray for $8, so it's probably worth $8 I paid for it to have it on my shelf. And that is pretty much the verdict for Independence Day. As always, if you like the video, hit the like button, share it on your social media so your friends can see me ramble on about movies like this. Uh, I'm putting out an episode like this every single Sunday afternoon uh, for the next four months. I got 16 episodes planned for season one of movies I should have seen by now. And then you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Bevan Boychuk. I took the 14 out of the Twitter handle, so both are now just at Bevan Boychuk. And tune in on Thursday. I'll have some kind of vlog up. Uh, I haven't quite decided what it's going to be about yet, but I will be stricking, sticking pretty strictly to the schedule of a movie review on Sunday and a vlog on Thursday. So two videos a week for the foreseeable future. And I will see you guys later. Ciao!